We have talked about demand and supply. And then we have talked about production and cost. So demand and supply gives you a sort of a general feel for the environment. What, what is the business environment like? And we did a little bit about finding out you know, what, what, what goes into people's behavior. So why does the demand curve slope downwards? Uh, we have not uh, been, you know, when it came to supply, we sort of said, okay, the supply curve slopes upwards. Something you may or may not believe in. But nevertheless, beyond that, we went on to talk about production and cost. So looking deeper into the supply issue. What, how does uh, a firm decide on what price and what quantity um, to sell? So to sell at what price and to produce at what quantity? So we have looked at obviously production, how the technology essentially and the associated cost of production obviously plays a big part. But that still doesn't answer the question as to you might say, well, what is, how much should I produce and what price should I charge? So that is essentially what we want to start talking about today. Uh, last time, I think I gave you a hint and said that um, the, what you, the production or the quantity and the pricing decisions obviously depend on what sort of a market you are in. Okay? So the more competitive the market, you would suspect that would have certain bearing on the choices you make regarding either prices or how much should you sell. So traditionally economists, when it comes to competition or thinking about competition or business rivalry, we have, we sort of seem to think in a, along a spectrum. So if you say, so one end of the spectrum we have something called perfect competition, right? So it's a situation where the competition is perfect. So in some sense, it's a very ideal situation. It's never really found. You don't often come across markets which are perfectly competitive in that sense. What should be the, if, if somebody is out there who's supposed to determine what the prices ought to be, how does this person arrive at that, what's the benchmark? And the competitive market sort of provides a benchmark. You can say, ah, well, if I don't know anything else, I will go for the competitive price, which of course might lead to problems, but that is, gives you a starting point. The other opposite, of course, is something called a monopoly. So that's the sort of the other extreme of perfect competition. So here, if competition is ideal, here, competition is ideally bad. I mean, here's the ideally perfect, and here's the ideally imperfect. It's really, really bad if you have a monopoly. So, you know, to can either talk about two things which do not exist, uh, so we should complement it with something which does exist. Uh, and so we have two other kind of structures we talk about. One is called monopolistic competition. The other is called oligopoly. Now, monopolistic competition sort of borrows some of the features of perfect competition and some of the features of monopoly and produces a sort of a workable model which is a lot like perfect competition. Whereas oligopoly has a situation where uh, there are a few producers in the market and the hallmark of an oligopoly of course is that producers realize that they are interdependent. So this would probably to a certain extent be the world that all of you will live in. You will probably most probably be working for oligopolies. Anywhere you look at say the market for cars it's an oligopoly. The market for Washing machines, dryers, mobile phones, all of these are oligopolies. Mm -hmm.